What's going on Eliminators? Today I'm going to show you how to fix a lawnmower that rips the recoil pull start right from your hand. So you guys ever have a lawnmower where you go to start it up and uh, when you go to pull the recoil it uh, rips the cable right from your hand? Chances are you have what's known as a sheared flywheel key. So in today's video we're going to be looking at exactly that. So we got a Yardworks mower here that uh, we serviced and uh, after a while you know we were using it as our personal machine so you'd go to pull start this thing and the cord would just rip right back out of your hand and uh, that's because the timing was off so what happens is uh, your little keyway here that's what sets your timing and that's basically what sets the timing of the spark so as your flywheel comes around here it's got magnets on the flywheel and those magnets pass your coil right here and as that magnet passes your coil it creates an electrical current which goes down your high tension lead into your spark plug and creates a spark which then creates ignition in your combustion cylinder basically what you want to have is uh, ignition at just around top dead center uh, the problem is when you shear your flywheel key you actually create spark uh, at the wrong time so instead of your piston being at top dead center um, it might be at uh, you know the intake stroke so you're trying to create combustion before the engine is supposed to be creating combustion which generates that kickback so here's what a key is supposed to look like and that key goes into what's known as a keyway which is right here on our flywheel now in order for us to get this flywheel off we had to use what's known as a flywheel puller we used what's known as a jaw type flywheel puller uh, basically you put the center shaft here onto your crankshaft of your engine and then you put the jaws underneath your flywheel when it's bolted onto the engine and uh, if you are using a jaw type flywheel puller you want to try and put the jaws underneath the thickest part of the flywheel so that it's uh, the strongest and then uh, as you tighten this up it pulls this which in turn pulls your flywheel up so this is what a flywheel key is supposed to look like uh, you guys can see I filed down the ends so that there are no burrs on it and this is what the key looked like that we took out of it so this one has been sheared and uh, basically it's cut in half so let's take a look at uh, what some of these flywheel keys actually look like so um, right here we got uh, the one that I've already shown you that's the flywheel key that uh, is supposed to be in here and uh, basically that's just a straight one uh, sometimes you guys are going to have what's known as a step key so it's designed specifically to either retard or advance the timing um, and those are you know designed specifically like that so it may look as if it's sheared but it's supposed to be like that that's known as a step key and then you have what we have here which is a sheared flywheel key so you guys can see that this rectangular key has just been sheared in half to what we have right here which is two halves now and uh, that's exactly why we were getting kickback on our pull start so basically what I've done is uh, cut a new piece of key stock so you can go out and purchase key stock at uh, your local automotive store you guys can see we got this at uh, Princess Auto and uh, you can get all different sizes but uh, this is the one that we needed here now I do believe this is a quarter inch key stock and uh, this is exactly what it takes uh, so we've just cut off a piece that was long enough that we needed and I've already showed you guys that uh, after you cut it you get a little bit of burrs onto it so uh, just take a file and uh, clean up all your edges then go ahead and get a file and you want to take your file and you want to clean up your keyway so you want to go in here and you want to clean the path that the flywheel key is going to go into and you want that as clean as possible you don't want it to develop any burrs or else you're going to get hung up when you go to reinstall that key then come over to your crankshaft and using your file you're going to want to clean that as well now i'm not sure if you guys can see this or not clearly but uh, this is a tapered keyway so at the top of the flywheel you guys can see that uh, our keyway has a bigger groove and then it gets smaller and tapers out as it goes to the bottom of the flywheel now that's designed specifically to tighten the flywheel onto this keyway onto the crankshaft so basically you slide your keyway in you guys just want to check your fitment before you uh, go to install that make sure that fits in nicely as it does and uh, basically you guys want to put your flywheel on line up your two keyways on your crankshaft and your flywheel and then go ahead and slip in your key until it gets tight and now that we have our flywheel off 
it's a good time to take a little bit of uh, nickel anti-seize and put it onto your crankshaft. And basically guys, this will prevent the aluminum flywheel from corroding and seizing itself onto the steel crankshaft. So if we ever have to take this flywheel off again, then it'll be nice and easy and the flywheel should come off easily. Okay, so I've uh, put my flywheel back on and uh, we're almost at the point where I'm gonna uh, install the keyway again. And you guys can see that I've lined up both keyways and I got my key right there. Now again, some of you guys might have that stepped key. So when you guys look on your engine, it'll actually appear to be a sheared key, but uh, in fact, it won't be. So you guys are gonna have to refer to your manual just to check that. But uh, right now, we're just gonna slip that key back in, get the nut back on tightened up, and then we'll get uh, all of this uh, top plastic shrouds back on and fire this thing up. And when we go to give this thing a pull, it should pull and fire right up nice and easily, and it shouldn't rip the pull start handle from our hand. Now, if you get to the point where I'm at, where the key is bottomed out in the keyway, uh, what's happened is we've ran out of room in that uh, little tapered section. So you don't wanna cut it shorter. What you wanna do is pull this key back out from here and you wanna file in just a slight bit of taper so that we can bottom this key to the top of the flywheel here. Because you guys gotta remember, there's gonna be a nut that goes on top of this crankshaft and uh, it's going to thread in and you guys are going to want to get that nut flush with the top of this flywheel here so you guys can see clearly we're just uh, maybe about a quarter of an inch up so what I'm going to do is I've set up my flywheel puller here again and uh, again you guys just hook it up just like this so you put the jaws underneath the flywheel and then uh, you can adjust everything so that it's nice and straight and that it's nice and straight this way as well and then you just tighten this right here and it pulls your flywheel right off your crankshaft. And again, just tighten that till everything's loose. Then you could go ahead, back off your jaw type flywheel puller, pull off the jaws. And now we can pull our flywheel and our key back out, remembering the side that we're going to file a taper into. Now here's our old key. You guys can't really see it because it is split, but uh, when this was all together, there was a slight taper that was uh, filed into this thing. So what I've done is uh, just filed a little taper onto the one edge so you guys can see nice and square here. And if we flip over, we have a slightly smaller square. And uh, that's because I've put just a slight taper onto that one edge. So we're gonna put this back in, try it out. And using a drift pin, which is uh, this right here with a small hammer, I was able to tap that in easily so you guys don't want to force it again that's why I filed that slight slight taper onto it and then matched it with the taper on the flywheel itself now I should note that uh, I had the blade and gauge handle pushed down and clamped with uh, one of these guys which I call a quick clamp so we've now let that up and what that allows me to do is check the position of the flywheel brake so when you release your lever to stop your machine there's a little kill switch here which uh, has a wire going to your coil and that grounds out your coil, which then stops spark from being produced and also applies a little brake disc here to your flywheel. And you guys just want to check to make sure that's lined up, which you guys can see it is lined up perfectly. This has to go on to the flywheel first. So this guy here is what your uh, pull start grabs a hold of and uh, that has to go on and then your nut goes on top of that. So I'm just going to pull that nut off put this on and then we'll get everything back together. Okay, so we got our top shroud on. This is the metal part that goes on before the plastic part and uh, that just takes four 3 8 bolts right there and right there. Then you're gonna wanna secure your dipstick. It's got a little tab here that just fits in and then uh, just line up your hole, put your bolt in. Okay, now we've flipped down our gas tank with this little plastic circular piece that goes around and using 5 16 bolts we got those three tightened up. So now we're ready for our top plastic cover and our little air box cover. Okay, now you have to take this uh, rubber spacer here and your uh, bolt, and that goes in right there at the bottom of the gas tank, fits in just like that. Then using a 5 16 socket, tighten up these two bolts here on your uh, air filter cover, and then go ahead and get this main yellow cover up on top of that one using two Phillips screws. Then pull your pull start handle through that little gap there. Take your string up through here and just tighten up the little eyelet that your pull start string goes through. And uh, this machine's done and ready to fire up again. This is our new lift table, by the way. We picked this up for 150 bucks over at uh, Canadian Tire. 
it's pretty sweet. You just uh, pump this thing with your foot a bunch of times. You guys can see it's kind of like a scissor lift, and uh, this thing lifts up. Makes working on lawnmowers uh, way easier. It's got a hydraulic jack in the bottom, and then uh, when you want to let the thing down, you just grab a hold of this handle, pull that, and uh, it drops down. Makes it uh, nice and easy for, uh, you know, working on lawnmowers by yourself so you don't need uh, two people. Uh, working on these little push mowers, they're pretty light, but uh, when you work on some of the John Deere self-propels and uh, the Honda self-propels, boy, they sure do get heavy. And, uh, you know, lifting them up by yourself, not, uh, not a good idea. So one of these things, you just slide it on, jack the thing up. You can uh, work on it at basically any height uh, that you want. And uh, yeah, we got this on sale. It was a good purchase. Okay, so I'm right ready to fire this thing up and I should be able to pull this nice and smooth and it should fire right up. So that's it guys, pretty simple, but that's how you fix a lawnmower that's uh, giving you those kickback issues. So most likely it's a shared flywheel and uh, that's the way you fix it. You pull the flywheel, you cut yourself a new key you uh, file the keyway, make sure everything's smooth and that there's no burrs. You install the new key, torque down your nut, reassemble everything, and uh, your lawnmower fires at the right timing now. So if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You can click here to subscribe, and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every week, so be sure you come on back and check the channel out for uh, you know new content every week. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>